Hi, I'm April Palencia. I'm with the Sustainability Project. I've been a board member since 2000 and I've served on many of the executive committee positions there as well as helped out with Earth Day and the Parade of Green Building. And I'm also a local architect in town. An ecological footprint is a means to measure your impact on the earth, the actions and behaviors that you have in your lifestyle, and the energy that those behaviors use, and the use or waste of water and material resource use. A good calculator is found online by going to myfootprint.org. It's uh, very comprehensive in nature, and it can identify many areas where you can change your lifestyle, such as transportation and water use, um, food consumption, and goods and service use. It identifies areas in your life where you can modify your behaviors so that you are impacting the earth less by um, maybe installing low-flow shower heads and faucets and toilets in your home. You can consume less water. You can um, maybe begin to compost if you're already an avid recycler you can consider maybe not traveling by plane as often. If um, that's something that you do frequently, you could consider more local vacation travel. There are several ways that you can lighten your footprint, and this is a key tool to help you discover those areas. The Story of Stuff is a brilliant um, environmental tool. It's a 20-minute video you can find online at thestoryofstuff.com. It is a method to discover kind of how products are created, their manufacturing process, their resource usage, and the energy and water that they use, and the pollution that they create in our creeks and our air, and then what happens with that product in its useful life in the consumer's hands, if it's a durable product, if it lasts you a long time, or if it's built with what is called planned obsolescence, which is the intentional breakdown of the product or dysfunction of the product after a short period of time so that the consumer is forced to buy a new product rather than buying a really durable product, which is much more sustainable because it lasts through your lifetime or much longer than these kind of throwaway disposable products. The old slogan, reduce, reuse, recycle, is uh, very applicable now because I think a lot of us are in the habit of recycling on a daily basis, but it can be taken a step further. Um, maybe we recycle paper and plastic and metal, but um, are we thinking to recycle batteries and electronics and um, clothing in the form of donating our clothes to the Goodwill and shopping at um, reuse stores for our own clothes? and um, but even better than recycling would be to reuse or reduce so that there's no energy spent in turning um, a material, a formerly consumed material such as an aluminum can into a new aluminum can. That's very energy intensive. So if we can reduce our usage of aluminum cans uh, by some fraction, that would be even more beneficial to the planet than uh, recycling, even though recycling is very critical and we all need to continue to recycle as well. Um, reducing our consumption in general and trying to think of items that we could either borrow instead of buying new would really lighten our footprint on the earth. And so if you're thinking of going out to buy a new lawnmower or a set of tools, you may want to check with your neighbor first to see if you can borrow theirs and therefore the energy and the material uh, use won't go into creating a new product for you to use that you may only use two times a year or once a week or something. But if you can share that product with your neighbor, then you're having a lighter impact on the earth. To green my lifestyle, I'm uh, trying to, well, first of all, I live downtown in a condo, and so I'm trying to have a smaller literal footprint on the earth, and that requires much land use for uh, myself and my husband to live. And by living downtown, we can also benefit from being able to walk downtown. I walk or bike to work almost every day, or we can carpool in rainy weather. I can take the bus. I'm just a block from two bus lines. 
Um, so that's one major way that I try and li live a green lifestyle. And then um, daily lifestyle habits, such as I try to hang my laundry on the line to dry whenever I can. Um, and maybe when I rinse my vegetables, I use that water in my garden rather than just dumping it down the drain. Trying to use less packaged products, more whole foods from the farmer's market so that I'm not um, contributing to the waste stream of constantly going through packaged apples and packaged vegetables. In particular, I really recommend that everybody try the bus once in a while. I think that there's sometimes a stigma about using the bus, and it's um, one very easy to do thing that we can all contribute um, to our community and lighten up our traffic, lighten up our pollution, lighten up our footprint by taking the bus occasionally or even work it into our daily life if possible. Um, and also finding that we can bike miles without winding ourselves and we finally get around pretty quickly on a bicycle. So that's a, a good place to start if that's um, an option for people out there. Um, and certainly just reducing disposable consumption as much as possible, buying durable products that are um, well-made and well-engineered so that they last you a long time rather than being tossed in the trash can within a week or a year's time. I would say that the internet is a wealth of resources, so it's if you're ever looking for answers, they're all out there. There are many lists of 10 things you can do, and um, that's a good place to start. And if you just start with one and do it consistently until it becomes a, a behavior in your lifestyle that you don't think about any longer, and then you add one more and you just continue to add behavioral choices to your lifestyle until it becomes second nature.